It's on the flow. It's on the flow. Get a bag, let it stack, then get some more. It's on the flow. It's on the flow. Get a bag, let it stack, then get some more. It's on the flow. Welcome to Views from the Lake Podcast. It's your boy Lil Dave Got It. And today we got a special guest. The most swaggiest guy I know. The most intellectual rapper. Uh, a smooth guy. One of the flyest in Kansas City. Everybody knows this dude. He is popping. He's at. Uh, who we viewing today? Man, Speedway, man. You know how I'm coming, man. Live and, and direct, man. Speedway. Popping, little brother. For sure. And and those that don't know, this is my blood brother, my older brother, my only brother. Blood brother, same mama. Yeah. Same mama. Exactly. So uh for those that don't know you though, you got a talent in music. For sure. So we're gonna get into that. Um so let's start from the beginning. Where was you born and raised? Man, Kansas City, Missouri. Middle of the map. Okay. And what was your earliest memory as a kid? Shit. I got a lot of them, shit. Let's I mean, hear I one. Shit, just shit, just being a young nigga, just always just living in different hoods, like growing up, like shit, a nigga kind of bounced around. Like moms lived in a lot of different areas. I got family scattered all throughout KC, so I was able to to migrate to different parts all throughout Kansas City to kind of give me like a better outlook on how the street shit go and just a better outlook on life because I'm seeing it from so many different areas. And I had so many real, genuine OG niggas around me. And a lot of these OGs is like my uncles, my cousins, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or just OGs who liked how I was moving and they saw something different in me. So a lot of my memories just came from my experiences in life. Okay. And you grew up on 62nd and Wild Bash, a.k.a. The Block. Tell us about 62nd and Wild Bash. What's yeah, so that was, that was, that was probably the main block that I grew up on. Because that's where my grandma stayed. Both of my grannies, they lived right next door to each other. A lot of people probably sleep on Wabash. Like, I ain't gonna lie. You gotta ask you to do your homework on 62nd and Wabash on some J Main shit. Like, that block legendary. A lot of OGs grew up on that block. It was a dead end street. If you know Kansas City, any dead end street in Kansas City, that bitch gonna bust. If you lived on a dead end street and your shit didn't bust you, that motherfucker just wasn't it. So growing up on Wabash, man, I seen a lot of shit, bro. A lot okay. of shit that I probably shouldn't have even seen in my age, to be honest, but shit. Got you, got you. And how many siblings do you have? So on my Duke side, I got one. Of course, you. You know, you my little brother. But on my pop side, I got 10. Pops, got 10. pops got a lot of kids. I, I will make his 11th kid. So how was your childhood? Would you say, uh, did you have an interesting childhood? Was it regular as how other kids is? Or how I was mean, that? shit. To me, my shit might have been like everybody else. But one thing I always noticed as a child was, like, my peers didn't have the same upbringing in their household like me. My mama worked her ass off. You know what I'm saying? One thing I'm always giving my mama credit on is that she always was on her shit. So me and my little brother, we was raised in the hood, in the trenches. But to us, it never felt like that because my mama made sure we had everything we needed. Now, I can't say the same for, like, my friends growing up because I knew their situations and their households wasn't as structured as mine or they didn't have fortune enough to have like the same type of mama I had. So to me, that shit was fun. You know what I'm saying? That shit didn't feel like the trenches. If we was going through a struggle, my mama never made it known to us. We was going through a struggle. We never felt that shit. So for me, nigga, my childhood was lit. Did you uh, play any sports or activities like that? I yeah, definitely was athletic. I played basketball. I mean, far as like on a team, I played basketball, but like even in streets, just in the hood, I played football, basketball, soccer, baseball, anything that, you know, just kept me active. I was down to play anything. I always was real athletic, believe it or not. I was always really good at sports when I was young. And uh, what what elementary school did you go to? I went to Holiday Montessori, man. A lot of real ones went to that school, man. If you know about Holiday, man, you know, like, a lot of niggas went to Holiday, bro. So, yeah, I went to Holiday up until my sixth grade year. Okay, okay. So you're hooping, you in sixth grade. Are you in the streets like that? Or you're not really in the streets or you just really focused on, on, on sports, basketball? Well, at that age, six in the sixth grade, like hell nah. You know, I'm just now hitting middle school. I'm just now getting into like women. Like I'm just now hitting puberty type shit. I'm losing my virginity around 11 and 12. So I'm worried about women. You know what I'm saying? Can, can we about talk girls. about that? Because sure. uh, a lot of people know 
that that you do deal with a lot of women. What what age did you did you just say eleven years old you lost your virginity? <laughs> yeah, man, I ain't gonna hold you. I lost my virginity at eleven. And that's just because, like I said, nigga grew up in the hood. So when you live in the hood, you exposed to shit that you shouldn't be doing at that age. And in the hood, you know, that just type okay, of shit. Around, okay, around that time, can you name some people? Who was you running with around that time? Some guys that you was maybe running with around that time. So look, if I'm going to do it that way, I got to break it down. Because like I said, I, I grew up on Wabash, but I lived on Swope Park in Friendship Village at that time, too. So when I lived in Friendship Village, I was running with my nigga Ronell, R.P. Ronell, you know what I'm saying? His little brother, Eddie, uh, my nigga Carlos, uh, my nigga Lil Mike, uh, my nigga Lil Trey. Lil Trey lived right next door. That probably was like my little brother, Lil Trey. Um, my boy Mike Fennell, his big brother Trey. Um, shit, bro, I ain't going to lie. My nigga Will, Uni Mac, y'all yeah, probably know Uni. Uh, my nigga DJ, my nigga Dylan, my nigga Devontae, so like. Man, I could go on and name how many people in the village that I was rocking with. If you, you have to just be there to know. Okay, okay. So after you leave the village in 2004, December, you start going, uh, you move out south to Irvin Middle School. Tell me about Irvin. How was Irvin when you had to transition from the city, which was some all you knew, to out south, which seemed so far and so distant to what you, how you uh, grew up? So it was a big difference because I was going to King before I went to to Urban. So I went to Urban in seventh grade. I left King. King, nigga, that shit was like a motherfucking jail. If you went to King Middle, you know that motherfucker had jail bars, metal detectors, fights every day, food fights. So to leave from the city school to go to a suburban school, kind of, that they would consider urban, it was a big difference because, like, we ain't had no metal detectors. Like, I seen a lot of niggas out there want to act like they was from the environment I was coming from. And I'm knowing these niggas ain't, ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? The shit that they portraying is the shit that I was really growing up in. And I'm trying to get away from that shit. Got you, so got you. So it was, a, it was a big transition. But shit, like me, I ain't gonna lie. I always been like a person that everybody just wanted to gravitate to. You know what I'm saying? I just always stayed cool like how I be. And shit, motherfuckers just instantly start gravitating to me. And shit, basically, shit, I got popular around that bitch. No, that's real. So after you leave Irvin, you start going to Hickman High School? Yeah, I started at Hickman. So my high school years, I ain't going to lie, like I bounced all over because, you know, me and moms, we clashed a lot. So yeah. a nigga kind of maneuvered around. But like, yeah, my freshman and my sophomore year, I started at Hickman. Uh, My junior year, me and moms had our own personal issues. So, you know, I moved out. I started going to Central because I went back to Friendship Village with my auntie. So I went to Central for a little bit. Uh, Central was cool. That bitch was busting, got into a couple of altercations there. You know what I'm saying? Had some situations with some niggas. Eventually, at that point, I ended up swapping from Central, going to Imagine Renaissance because I ain't going to hold you. That's where a lot of my homies that I was hanging with at that time, they was going to Renaissance. So after I had my altercations and shit at the school at Central, I used that as a way to get up out of Central to go to the school with all my partners. That's when I started going to Renaissance. And then eventually at Renaissance, I ain't stayed there too long. I was only at that bitch probably for like four months. And then my mom, she kind of was on some shit like she wanted me to come back out south with her type shit. And, you know, at that point, my principal at Renaissance, he kind of hollered at me because he kind of knew the situation. He was telling me, like, look, you got to go back out south, you know what I'm saying, with your mom's type shit. You know, she wants you to come back home. So eventually I ended up going back to, to Hickman, and that's where I graduated from in 2010. Now, around this time, which I'm, I'm probably late within the story, your little sister died in, was that 07? My little sister died in 0... oh Nah, she died in 06. 06. She died my 8th grade year. Your 8th grade year, yeah, okay. she died my 8th grade year. My little sister on my daddy's side, Keandra. Rest in peace, Mumu, my baby. Okay, so Mumu dies, and eventually you graduate from Hickman Mills, uh, 2000, class of 2010. Now, I do want to ask you, is that the same year that your friend Raheem Marshbanks died? Did he die that year? No, nah, Raheem died in 09. In 09, okay. Yeah, R.P. Raheem. Uh, I ain't going to sit up here and make it sound like me and him was the best of friends, but that was my boy. I met him through my nigga Ramon. At that time, when back in middle school, probably like early high school years, me and Ramon was like this, you know what I'm saying? We actually got family members that kind of make us related. You know what I'm saying? My uncle got a baby by his cousin. So I met Raheem through Ramon, fucking with Ramon. 
And then just so happened, coincidentally, Raheem's birthday the day before mine. He born October 22nd. I'm born October 23rd. But RP my nigga Raheem. Raheem was like the first nigga that I met personally for his age that was really in this street shit. I ain't gonna lie, I got my boy tatted on my arm just to how much respect I have for that nigga, you know. Uh, Raheem was more than just a street nigga, though. Raheem was a funny-ass nigga. Like, to know Raheem, bro, the first thing you're going to say is the nigga was funny. Um, I actually seen my nigga, like, uh, two days before he passed. Him and my nigga Matthew had put up on me to burn him a two-gun CD. And uh, me and Raheem were always just talking shit to each other. Raheem actually gave me the nickname Speedway. Mm. A lot of people probably don't know, so that's a good question you asked, little bro, like, my first time ever, like, kind of getting in the high speed was because of this nigga Raheem. We was trailing Ramon and another nigga, I ain't going to say too many names. We trailing Ramon. He in my car with me. If you know Raheem, you know how Raheem moving. He got extra protection on him. We see the boys get behind us. The first thing he says is like, nigga, you ever ran the police? I'm like, nah. He like, well, nigga, you going to learn today. So he kind of, like, navigated me making the moves I was moving. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. They never flicked the lights, so we don't even know if they was on us or not. Raheem just paranoid, though, because, you know, if you know Raheem, you know how he riding. So, basically, we get up out of there. Raheem started joking when we get back to wherever we was going. I can't remember. He started talking about, yeah, I just made this nigga run his, get on his first high speed, little speedway. He was driving like he was on the speedway. So, it started as a joke, and people started talking to me about it. So, I kind of took it and ran with it, and I put it on my Facebook you know, once you put a name on Facebook back then, that solidified your nickname right there. So then, you know, coincidentally, Raheem ended up passing away. So I kind of kept the nickname in memory of my nigga because, you know, I had that much respect for Raheem. So that's kind of how I got my nickname. Got you. And so right after that, you graduate, you, you go do some of college. How was college for you? That shit was lit. I ain't gonna lie. I encourage any young nigga with an opportunity to make something of themselves to go to college, bro. Because even if you don't finish that shit, bro, it just gives you an experience outside of where you're from. It shows you something different. You get to meet people from all over. I went to a university, so, like, I'm meeting motherfuckers from all over. And I ain't going to lie, like, when I first got up to college, I ain't going to lie, I was shy. Like, if you know me, you know I don't really be talking to people like that at first. So it kind of took me a while to open up. At college, they don't like the shy niggas. Like... Back at the crib, like, if you shy and you low-key, girls like that because you mysterious. At college, they don't like that shit. They want the live nigga. They want the nigga that's popping. So, like, once, like, niggas start telling me, like, bro, all these females up here asking about you, bro, everybody curious about you, bro, stop all that shy shit. Once I start opening up, I ain't going to lie to you. I became one of them niggas at, at LU. I ain't going to lie. Like, anybody know about me and my nigga Corn? Me and my nigga Corn, we legends up in Dawson. We had that bitch rolling. Like, I ain't going to lie. We had that bitch busting. Okay, and so you come back from from college, and you start a clothing line, Guy Family Grind Clothing. Could mm -hmm. you talk about that? So yeah, so I started Guy Family Grind. That's actually like my brand in general, even for my music. Like that's that's everything to me. That's that's what I live by. That's my morals. That's my principles. So I kind of just started that based off of like kind of advertising me trying to start my own brand. And you know I ain't gonna lie, like my shit took off. Not only because of the fact the shit was fly, but what it stood for. It stand by realistic shit that people really live by day to day basis. So I had a lot of good success for it. I ain't gonna lie, it kind of slowed down because I didn't really know how like the marketing and shit with clothing and shit worked. So I ain't gonna lie, like I was putting more money into that shit than I was making out of it. And it kind of had a nigga a little frustrated because I didn't really know the right way to do that shit. So I kind of fell back on the shit. But that's still the brand. That's still the label. God, Family Grind. That's everything still to this day. Okay. What age did you start rapping? And who did you start rapping with? I started rapping at 14. The nigga that made me rap R.P. my cousin, Young Tay. My nigga, Monte Buford, my big cousin, man. I ain't gonna lie. That was the rawest rapper in the world to me. That nigga was like Lil Wayne to me. Tay was rapping first. You know, he would call me every day. And as soon as I answer the phone, he'll spit a bar. And, you know, it got to a point to where, like, that's how we talked. Monte was a childish, funny nigga, but he had bars. So, like, he, you call or he and you answer the phone and say hello, he say kitty. He do childish shit like that, so it kind of became, like, the way that we talk. So when I start doing that shit to him, he like, man, Kev, write something. Write some music. I'm like, nigga, I can't write music. He like, nigga, I know you got that shit in you. You my little cousin, bro. You around me 24-7. Write some shit. So, shit, I wrote some shit. I called Tay as soon as he answered the phone. I spit that shit. That nigga went crazy. That nigga was like, man, I knew it. 
I knew you had that shit in you. Do you remember? Do you remember the first rap that you rapped, or what was your first song? I ain't gonna lie. The first rap I probably wrote was probably just a freestyle. Ooh, freestyle. First song I probably wrote. I can't remember the first song I wrote. I can remember the first song I recorded though. First song I ever recorded, it was on that Fifty Cent beat, Window Shopper. I uh, I recorded it with this dude named Vin Du. Shout out Vin Du. That was the first nigga ever to record me. I recorded at his house, so that was the first song I ever recorded. Okay, okay. My first video I ever dropped was called uh, like the one that really got me notified was my G shit video. Over that uh, I got a chick to love me be by Tyga and Jamie Foxx. Yeah, yeah, that's that song favorite. really song. stamped me right there. I ain't gonna lie. When I dropped G shit and shot that video to it right when my son was born and shit, that that kind of made motherfuckers like, ah, oh, yeah. Like Kev back. I already was buzzing though in high school off my music because I was rapping in high school. So I already had a buzz. But when I dropped that song right there with that video, that's when motherfuckers like, yeah, bro, you got this shit. And that's what we're I doing. mean, sometimes it might take me like a day or two. It just all depends on where my mind is at at that time. Because I ain't gonna lie, I write my music in the morning when I first wake up. Because it's like when I first wake up, it's like my mind is just racing. It's just racing. So at that point, once my mind is racing and I got all the shit in my head, I gotta put it on paper. Or I gotta put it, I gotta write that shit down, put it on a notepad. So it just really all depends on if if the shit is coming consistently, like if the bars is just coming, like if the punchlines is just coming, if all that shit just flowing instantly as soon as I hit the beat, hit the beat I mean, nigga, I could I can make a song literally in ten minutes. It's times I done literally wrote a song ten minutes before I went to the studio just because it was all just coming to me. Everything was just perfect. The delivery, the the delivery was there. Everything was there. So shit, it just all depends on where how how. And then it depends on if I feel like if I want this song to be that song. If I'm like, yeah, this the one. So I might take a day or two on that because I wanna I want this to be my single. So it might, especially if it's an original beat, I want to make sure that this is that one for me. So I'm gonna put a little bit more time in that instead of like a freestyle. Of course, a freestyle, I ain't gonna put too much time into that. Gotcha. Have you ever wrote a song while you were depressed? Fuck yeah, that's when I write my best music when I'm going through a depression. Absolutely, that's the best time for me to write because, like I said, I got so much shit on my mind and sometimes keeping that shit in my mind is what's causing the depression. So it's like, fuck it, I need to get this shit off my mind, I need to put this shit on paper, or I need to go to the studio and let that shit out. And that's when I create my most creative shit or my best music. Lately, your, your music has had more of a uh, narrow pitch, more vibey tempo. Which is more of a, a softer flow, and that's what I was feeling like. Um, with this, with this new style of music, you just been, you ain't been holding back. You, I've been listening to your songs, and I can feel the emotion in the song. You know, and that's what made me ask that last question. Like, have you ever suffered from depression, and have you made music? Why? It's because uh, these days it's hard to feel when you're listening to these songs. So for me to listen to your last five, six songs and they all have this same type of Bobby tempo, it makes people wonder, like, you know, what's up with you? So is that style of music that soft, is that something we can expect on a mixtape or album song from you? Just a whole set of that? Or because I love it, honestly. You know, I appreciate um, it's, it. hard, it's hard enough for us young black guys to even express ourselves. Yeah, that's a so fact. So when I see somebody else expressing it through music, it, it gives a sense with me, with myself, I feel good. So, how is that? Yeah, absolutely. Like, as black men, you know, or some just men, period, like, we get frowned upon if we don't, when we when we express our emotions. You know, that shit, that shit, that shit cap. Express your emotions, bro. You human like everybody else, bro. Fuck what other people think. You can only take so much. If you don't get that shit out, bro, you're going to fuck around and want to commit suicide or go do something stupid to somebody else, bro, and fuck around in somebody else's life or in your own life. Get that shit out, bro. Fuck, fuck what other people going to think. I respect the niggas that know they going through some shit and they try to get help or try to fix that shit. Then a the nigga know he going through some shit, but he, he afraid that he going to get judged or get frowned upon for not doing shit about it. I don't respect that shit. So absolutely, when it come to me, bro, you're going to get that music based off of how I'm feeling. And lately, a lot of my music, it is going to be more relatable because I'm rapping based off of how I'm feeling. It's more realistic. It's more authentic. 
And it's going to make the fan base that I got or the people who do listen to my music or the new people who want to tap in with me, it's going to make them to be able to relate to it. Because the shit that I'm rapping about, what I'm going through, the nigga listening to the song could be going through the same shit. But at the same time, it also makes the listener have a better connection with you. Absolutely. And, and I feel like that's the most important thing that we can get out of this music is is finding that, that feeling to get out of, you know. Oh, that's facts, bro. Definitely, because the main way you create your fan base is if your fans feel that they can relate to you. I ain't going to lie. Like, you got some people, you be like, all right, I don't really care about relating to him. His music is just good. But at the same time, that's how you get loyal fans, when your fans can relate to that shit. When they can sit back and say, nigga, I listen to this song that you made every time I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling depressed or I'm mad. As soon as I listen to that song, bro, that shit cheer me up, bro. That shit make me realize I'm not the only nigga going through this shit. This nigga Speedway rapping about the exact shit that I'm going through, bro. And that might help build them up. That might make them feel like they're not alone in this shit. And then at the same time, it might make them get creative an outlook for themselves to be able to get that shit off and get that shit out their mind, bro. Did you suffer from depression? Have you ever suffered from depression? Yeah, absolutely. You did mm -hmm. and made it out. Could you, could you tell people, you know, uh, you know, the routes to take? Hell uh, yeah. I actually got hospitalized for MDD, Major D Depression Disorder. Yeah, I really, I really went through that shit. I ain't gonna lie, I still have my times when I go through the depression. But now I can handle that shit way differently. I handle that shit on a more, a more mature, a mature way. And the main way that I do it is writing music. So the main thing with depression is all based off of emotions. Emotions are triggered by, triggered by thoughts. If you can change the way that you think, it's gonna change the emotions that you trigger. Because emotions are controlled, they just based off of your mind frame. Your, all your heart going to do is beat. It's your mind to tell your heart how to feel. So if you can learn to control your thought process and your train of thought, thought certain emotions you're not going to trigger. You're not going to have them emotions no more. It's a mental mental thing. So who are some, some local artists in Kansas City that you think we that, that the people should tap into or who's not, who's getting overlooked? Who, you know, who you fucking with in the city, man? Man, I fuck with I fuck with a lot of niggas from the city, but the rap side, or is this your your family life side, or is it all in one? You gonna get everything. You gonna get everything. Like I, I'm gonna use the vlogging as a way to kind of keep people in tune with me when I ain't drop no music video or if I ain't drop no music or no project. This still a way I can still have my fan base starting to build and keep them getting to know me as a person outside of just the music. So I'm gonna mix that shit in with both. I'm gonna mix them both in together. You know what I'm saying? Just keep feeding people, keep feeding my viewers and my fans and shit. Okay, so we know we got music coming, we got we got new vlog coming. What what else do you got coming? Shit, just whatever my mind feeling at that time, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I got I'm I'm about to be a stylist. If niggas want to get their drip right, holler at me, man. I'm 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 here to help people express themselves through their fashion. One thing about style to me, it's your way of expressing yourself as a person. So, you know, I'm here for any advice niggas need on getting fly. If niggas want to help me go, want me to go help them pick out a fit, you know what I'm saying? I'm with all that shit. So, tap in with me on that shit, too. I'll get you, I'll get your drip game right. So, in this sense, you would say that you're really an a artist. I mean, since from the sense you you paint the music, your, your swag, the, the show, I mean, everything around you is something. So would you say you're an artist in most aspects of your life? You Absolutely. Think? I'm an artist with music and I'm an artist because I paint pictures. Gotcha. For real, I'm Picasso with this shit, bro. I'm going to give you the whole thing. You got to have a drip to match the music. The shit got to the shit gotta add up. Like, I ain't going to lie, especially when it comes to women because women are going to be your biggest supporters. So if you got music, but if your appearance don't rap, match the shit you rapping about, it's like, it's like ah, he cool, but you got to be marketable. And as long as you marketable, bro, that's what's really going to take you out. Because women don't give a fuck about the music sometimes. They just care about how a nigga look. So if you on point, every time you shoot a video, when they see you, that make the music hit harder. That shit all go hand in hand. Yeah, got you, got you. Well, since you're vlogging now, I want to ask you, do you got any favorite vlog? When you, when you out here recording and you, you know, it's like... You know, it's storage. You know, it, it's all good healing. For sure, for sure, you know, and you look back on these times and you remember on certain vlogs, like, man, I remember I was at this point, yeah. I felt like this, or, you know, I look back on certain vlogs and I remember those emotions that I was born, yeah. hungry to do it, yeah. you know, and now I, I got views from the lake and now it's more and more people is understanding it, you know what I'm saying, which is 
kind of what I've been trying to get him to see, but it's hard to, you know what I'm saying? So nigga. You got to bring your, uh, you got to manifest it into your physical aspect. So I'm going to ask you, do you feel like you manifested a lot of this stuff? And you like, this is stuff you really had in your mind that you created and brought to life? Hell yeah, manifest, manifestation, that's how you start this shit. You got to manifest that shit. You got to speak that shit into existence. Like, I've been reading, like, the uh, the 48 laws of power or laws of attraction. So, like that. The energy and the success that you want in your life, you bring that shit by speaking it into existence and training your mind to work towards that shit. So, if you, if you want to become a boss in your mind, you already got to be seeing you a boss and thinking like a boss. If you want to become an artist in your mind, you already got to be telling yourself you're an artist. If you want to become a, bas a successful basketball player or a successful athlete, you got to already in your mind. Tell yourself that you are a successful athlete, bro. Manifestation is the biggest thing. That's what's going to bring that energy to you. You speaking that shit into life. Bro, that's how this shit works, bro. Your mind is like a lake, like an ocean. All this water, bro, that's like the thoughts in your mind just floating around. Nigga, that's how you get that shit out, bro. Express that shit. Manifest that shit, bro. Real shit. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, since you're vlogging now, I want to ask you, do you got any favorite vloggers? Do you do you watch vloggers? I mean, vloggers or anything? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. That's why I do. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I like Duke Dennis. Um, I like y, uh, YNH Prom. Uh, uh, I like The Shea Frost, King Sid, um, Bentley TV. Bentley probably my favorite vlogger. I ain't gonna lie, Bentley. Because Bentley, I just like his, he's just a young, fresh nigga. You know what I'm saying? Just like me. You know what I'm saying? And the type of shit that he doing and the way he living, that's the way that I wanted to live when I was his age. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, definitely the vloggers. Shout out to them because they they the, they the ones that setting the trend for this shit, bro. They showing you like, nigga, shit, I make just as much money as these rappers. Nigga, I live the same lifestyle as them. Just basically going on video and giving y'all inside of my life what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm getting paid for this shit. I'm getting paid just to show y'all what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, bro. You can't beat that shit. You getting paid just to be you. No, definitely, definitely. And that's most definitely why I started vlogging back in 2020. Hell yeah, you you one of my favorite vloggers too, little bro. Shit, I'm going to give you your flowers too, nigga. I ain't going to lie. When I seen you doing that shit, that made me want to do it, bro. So, yeah, no, you big yeah. shout out to you too, little bro. And I, okay, so you said you grew up on 62nd and Wabash. Can you name some of your OGs? Who was some of your OGs that you had around you? Did you, did you, you know? Shit, I had a lot. Shit, my uncle, shit, uh, shit, Tuki Chase. Shit, if you know about tu OG Tuki, you know, he like one of the biggest OGs out here. So, shit, I had Tuki, I had his brother Bob, shit, my uncle G Money. Uh, who's some more OGs that came from that block? Shit, nigga, my grandma, shit, Marcella, shit, my grandma Mary, shit, she an OG. My grandpa, Sammy Lee, you know what I'm saying? Them real OGs right there. If you know, what Wabash, 62nd and Wabash, you just got to be from that block to know it's so many people that been stamped on that block or then came through that block and left an impact on them. And, and I'm going to ask you a question because we left that block in 08, 2008. Now, since 2008, it's been 15 years later. They still haven't did nothing with that block. Do you possibly think it was lead or something that would have got us a big check that they didn't want us to know about? And that's why they moved us off that block so quick and they still ain't did nothing with that after 15 years in the middle of 63rd and Prospect? Uh, in my opinion, it was the area. Prospect is the area that's been run down for years. That shit only getting worse. So if you just ride down Prospect, period, they ain't did shit to Prospect at all. I feel like they just wanted to buy that that specific area like i said my granny my granny lived on that block over 20 years you know what i'm saying so it was just more or less like a, a business standpoint for the city and then i feel like they've had plans on making that area look better but the city's just so fucked up all around the streets is fucked up it's, it's a lot of rundown apartments it's just fucked up they never really got the blueprint of that shit completed. So that's why if you ride past that block right there, you would never even know Wabash was right there. It don't even look like it was ever a block right there. And I hate that they did that shit because I feel like I could have kept it for us. That shit held sentimental value for me. I want to be able to take my son and my niece and my nephew on that block to show them this is where all this shit started at. This is where I seen a lot of shit that I shouldn't have been seeing. This shit helped mold me. So it's like it do kind of made me sad that I can't even ride past and show my son where both of our grannies live right next door to each other 
what we was running. And then on top of that, like, my son, mama, her side of the family, they from that block too. Her big cousins live right across the street from my granny and them. So me and my son got a lot of history from that block that I wish he could be able to go back and see that shit too. So yes, yeah, it's, it's it's disappointing like a motherfucker. As far as if they knew some shit that we didn't know, fuck no. Nah, I just feel like that area was run down and they had plans on putting some shit there. It didn't fall through. So they cashed my granny and everybody on that block out to just take that block over and they just they just let that shit just go to waste. Gotcha, gotcha. Since we talking about Kansas City and this is home of the two time champion, Super Bowl champion. Yes, sir. Do Chiefs you, fucking you, kingdom, do boy. You like football? Do you like sports? What's man, sports? come on, like man. Sports? Come on, man. I'm a sportsman. I'm Stephen A. Smith, man. That's what all my niggas call me Speedway when it comes to this shit. Man, Speedway A. Smith, man. I love sports, man. I could talk sports all day. You know, uh, when it comes to the Chiefs, bro, I don't play about my Chiefs, bro. Don't don't talk to me crazy about my Chiefs, bro, because that's that's what's gonna really that's gonna really have me turn up on your fatherhood ass, was everything to me. You know, I ain't gonna lie. Fatherhood is what really made me grow and made me mature. Cause I ain't gonna lie. I was I was I don't say I won't say I was selfish, but I was at times self centered. Because, you know, when you young shit and you ain't really got nothing else to live for other than yourself, that's all you see about shit in life. But once I knew my son was on the way, I instantly knew, like, that shit over with. And then I ain't going to lie, shout out to my pops, but my pops wasn't the most consistent with me because he had his own personal shit. He had a lot of kids already, so he couldn't be the best father or the father that I probably needed him to be at that time. So I kind of used that as my motivation just to make sure that I was going to always be the best possible father I could be. And that shit was the best thing that ever happened to a nigga. That's no, what got me going to this day. Most definitely. Most definitely. Do you think he influences your music? Absolutely. He influenced me because just for the fact now I got a purpose to keep doing this shit. You know, even if this shit don't even make me millions of dollars, this just creates something for my son to be able to say his daddy did. I got these videos and shit like that to, for my son to be able to reflect on if he ever want to do music. He'd be like, shit, nigga, I look at my daddy videos. My daddy used to rap. My daddy was cold. I got the proof. And that's real. That's real. So where did you get the passion for music? When did you start feeling like this is something that you wanted to do? Shit, when I got that reaction from, from Tay. Yeah. Because once a nigga like Tay stamped that shit, that shit mean a lot. That shit motivates you because Tay was, Tay was already raw as fuck. Nigga, that was like Lil Wayne saying he liked my shit. So when Tay did that, gave me that reaction, that shit motivated me. But the main thing that influenced my music was just really the shit that was around me. And then just me realizing I had a mouthpiece. Like, I always had a mouthpiece even before rapping when dealing with women. Like, I just was a slick talking, smooth talking ass nigga. And like I said, a lot of that shit came from Tay. Being around Tay, I soaked so much game from him, it started rubbing off on me. So I always been smooth with my mouthpiece and it's just like it just was only perfect for me to start doing music. Got you. Could you uh, describe a Speedway studio session? What's a session like with Speedway in the studio? Shit straight to it. I'm coming in that bitch with all my songs I already wrote. I'm knocking out two songs in an hour, depending on how much I like the song and how I want to go about it. I might put more time into that one song, but I'm getting straight to that shit. I'm knocking two, three songs out in an hour. It's good vibes, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my engineer, Mab. Shout out to my other engineer, Greg, at Tackle Box. I ain't been able to get up with Greg in a minute because he's booming now, but it's still all love. But, you know, Mab know what's up as soon as I come in there. He already got everything pulled up for me. He know I'm about to go straight in there and burn that bitch down. Okay. And lately, your music has had more of a narrow pitch rap, but more of a vibey tempo. Do you prefer the more chill, laid back type of music, or is that something you just doing? Or do you prefer uh, the more 808 drum club type of sound rap? I ain't going to hold you. My music based off of how I'm feeling that day. Gotcha. I'm versatile. It ain't not one style of music I can make. If you go listen to my music right now, none of my music sounds the same. And really, like I said, it just all depends on what type of mood I'm in. It really ain't no type of song, no type of beat that I can't feel, that I can't, that I can't slay. It just all depends on my energy my vibe and just how I'm feeling that day. Shit, I can make any type of music. And that's and that's what and that's what makes you stand out in the Kansas City crowd and in other crowds as well because a lot of this stuff is starting to it's sounding all the same. Mm -hmm. So that's that's hey, that's a Facts. big thing. But like for sure. if you go back and even listen to my music back when I first started doing this shit, my shit never sounded like the regular Kansas City nigga shit. That's probably why my shit got overlooked so much because i don't sound like the typical kansas city nigga i don't rap about the typical kansas city shit 
I rap about shit that's more realistic than what I'm doing in my life now at this point. I ain't about to jump on a track and rap a bunch of cap ass shit that I ain't doing no more because as soon as a nigga pull my card and expose me that I ain't on that, y'all ain't gonna listen to my shit no more. So I'll rap, rather rap about more realistic shit that's more relatable to me in my life right now because when y'all hear my music, y'all gonna be like, oh yeah, that's, that's really Speedway. I can relate to that shit. That shit he really doing. I feel that because on how they feel, you said a line that stuck out with me. You said I'll be quick on my feet because a lot of niggas get killed just for thinking it's sweet. Is that why you so more uh, like kind of out the way? You're not seeing as much, you know, uh, they really got to call you to get to you. Is that why you move the way you move or? Uh, is it growing up in Kansas City is just like that? Or could you explain that? Shit. Growing up in Kansas City, it's like that for sure. Because ain't shit sweet around this motherfucker. And you got to know how to move to survive out here. But the main thing, bro, just come with maturity and growth, bro. I just don't fuck with people like that no more. A lot of people, they didn't grow the way that I grew. And they don't move the way that I move. And that's perfectly fine. But one thing about me, nigga, I've always been my own man. I've always been a leader. I've always been a trendsetter, nigga. I'm going to move at my own pace. I'm not going to wait for another nigga call me to tell me to do something. I'm going to move based off of me. And that's why if you do see me, I'm normally by myself or I'm with my son because that's just how I move. I'm just my own man. So a lot of it do be based off of where I live at because this bitch do get wild. And then the main thing is just growth and maturity, bro. It don't be shit going on too much for me to feel like it's a rush for me to get out here and move around like that. Gotcha. Last night, the game, it was 20 to 21. You know I'm a big gambler, so I put my odds in, man. Why did I put 21 to 17 as the winning odds? My homeboy, he put 40 to 24 and ended up turning his dollar into $353. Do you, do you support gamble or anything like that? Do you gamble? Or I support it, but I, I, me personally, I don't gamble because I, I, I don't like losing money. And I feel like when it comes to gambling, most good gamblers, they've been gambling since they was young. I wasn't gambling when I was young. So right now, I feel like if it ain't something that I got experience doing, I ain't fucking with it. Because gambling is so serious now. People know tricks. It's controlled. so much shit. I could be getting fucked out of my money the whole time because they know that I ain't as experienced as gambling as them. So I stay away from that shit. I don't fuck with it. I mean, I, I be doing like my little, uh, my little fan duel and shit like that. But like far as the most part of gambling, I ain't gonna lie. I don't really be fucking with the gambling too much. That just ain't me. Who's your Who's your celebrity crush? If you could have any, I'm gonna say top three. Who's your top three celebrity crushes? If you yeah. could have any top three. number one, Lauren London. No disrespect to Nip, but I feel like I had her before him in my mind anyway. Uh, Lauren London. I ain't gonna lie, Chloe Bailey, boy. Lately, she got a choke. She got me in a chokehold. Chloe Bailey for sure. And man. The third one, man, I ain't gonna lie. I gotta go with, uh, I think I gotta go with Lil Jada, man, Lil Baby Baby Mama, man. I'm starting to like them brown, them brown skins, man. Them Slim Jims, man. Oh, yeah, see, see, yeah. I'm, yeah. I, feel, I feel you see me. I'm, I'm still more on the old school. I still need a Megan Good, Lisa Ray. I'm still on that side of the, of the you know I, what But I'm I feel like I gotta break them down in the categories, like. If I if it come to Cougars, I'm definitely putting Lisa Ray in my top five Cougars for sure. I put her in there. I put Bernice in there. You know what I'm saying? I gotta I gotta I gotta break women down in categories like I do with my clothes and my shoes and sports. I ain't gonna lie, I break them down by category. Then you gotta have your little freaks in there. So I ain't gonna lie, you're in Miami. I ain't gonna lie, Suki. I like the little ghetto hood rats. I ain't gonna lie, the hood rats is fun. You know, and they live. I like that shit too. So I gotta I gotta I gotta put them in categories. But if it come to wifing. Them three that I just said, them would probably be the ones that I would wife. Okay, okay. So, Nick Cannon just had 10 kids. <laughs> Young boy just had about 10 kids. How I many think, kids would you see yourself having? Yeah, honestly, my son just turned 10 last month. I can't really see myself with no more kids. If I have another kid, I got to be married first. And we got to be in the right headspace. Mentally, emotionally, and financially, I could possibly see myself with one more kid if I get married. But if not, I'm cool with being a step pops. You know what I'm saying? I take somebody else's kids on and treat them like they mine. But honestly, me personally, I can't really see myself with no more kids. I just don't give the demeanor of having a lot of kids. I mean, if you look at how I look, 
and how I dress, you would think I'm a ladies' man, and the first thing you expect, that nigga probably got a bunch of kids. But nah, I ain't gonna lie to you. Most of my homies, I think I'm the only one out of the majority of my inner circle that only got one kid. All my close partners, them niggas like on their third, fourth, or fifth kid. Three, four baby mamas. Shit. I'm cool on that shit. That shit too much stress. One is enough, you hear me? One kid is affordable right now, you feel me? Shit, I base I base kids off of my finances, shit. I have a million. If I get a million dollars, yeah, I have another kid. Every million dollars I touch, I might consider another kid, goddammit. What did you learn from COVID? What I learned from who? COVID. COVID? Yeah, you know, during the quarantine. I thought you said you Kobe. <laughs> Kobe. I about to say, I learned a lot from Kobe. That was my role model. R.P. the Bean, man, the Black Mamba. Yeah, no, but when we was on uh, the pandemic and, you know, we were stuck in the house, what did you learn? You know, I managed to start blogging. That was something I picked up during the pandemic. What was something that you picked up during the pandemic that you kind of still use in your daily life? Self evaluation, learning myself more. Learning how to deal with my depression, learning how to elevate myself mentally, um, entrepreneurship. I ain't gonna lie, I feel like COVID was probably one of the best things that could have happened. So many people became entrepreneurs off that shit. And me, I always been a healthy nigga anyway. I always take care of myself. I eat vitamins on the regular. I got a strong ass immune system, so I wasn't really worried about ever catching COVID anyway. I just feel like shit. You always gotta try to find a negative situation and turn that shit to a positive situation. That shit helped out so many different ways, bro, to where it's the economy. You got to know how the economy, the economy works. You got to know how this shit works. The government know how to control this shit, bro. They been knew the COVID was going to come. That shit was already planned, bro. It's the same way a nigga wake up every day and he got his day planned out. Nigga, the government wake up with certain shit planned out. Ten years from now, we're going to get COVID. Twenty years later, we're going to hit him with the swine flu. Then we're going to hit him with the West Nile virus. It's, man, you got to know how this shit go, man. Niggas can't be simple-minded in this shit. But for the most part, I think, I think COVID helped a lot of people financially. And it gave people that drive because if you was a nigga who was so dependent on having a job or some shit like that, and you lost your job. All right, nigga, now we're going to see if it's going to bring out the hustler in you. Okay, right there. I'm going to stop you right there since you said financially. During COVID, it was an uh, epidemic of a PPP $20,000 loan. I know a lot of people that came up off that loan. Did you know some people that, that got that loan? Or did you get that loan? I ain't get it, but I ain't going to say no names for the people who did get it shit. Because, shit, they might have got that shit illegal. <laughs> so, I ain't about to get it. Nobody had an IRS knocking on their door, hitting their line. You know, but shit, shout out to the people who did get it and the ones who did benefit and flip that shit and use that shit to actually start something to set them up for the rest of their life. But me personally, nah, I ain't get that shit. I was just cool with the little stimulus, man. Trump Trump threw me some extra bread. I was cool with that. You feel me, shit? I fuck with Trump. A lot of people don't like Trump. I fuck with Trump. Trump ain't as bad as everybody thought. He just didn't like immigrants. He fucked with us. He just don't like immigrants. And he just an idiot. But he did what the government wanted him to do. Yeah, I think he still works for somebody. He can only do what the fuck they tell him to do. And he's going to do what they want him to do. So it's like shit. Nah. I mean, I ain't get no PPP though. I got PPPs though. Peace, prosperity, and progression. That's my PPP. What artist in the city would you work with? A Kansas City artist? Shit. Anybody. Anybody, shit, I, it ain't really too many artists that I don't got a personal relationship with. Half of the artists that y'all listen to now, genuinely, is my niggas. Like, I grew up with a lot of the artists that y'all know now. Like, for instance, like D Walk, MB. Like, them niggas was like my niggas. Like, them, like, really my niggas. You know what I'm saying? We kind of started doing music around the same time. You know what I'm saying? So, it really ain't nobody that I don't fuck with, far as when it comes to doing music. As long as you just want to lay some good shit. And you a real good, you a real good, honest, genuine nigga. You 100, shit, fuck it. I'm willing to work with anybody, shit. I want to see everybody get to this shit. Okay. What record label would you sign to? Would you consider signing to if, if they came at you? I'm going to keep it 100. If I had the opportunity to stay independent, I'd rather stay independent. But if I could get like a partnership with a label, shit, as long as them numbers right, I don't give a fuck who it is. Because at the end of the day, you they ain't even got to be the number one record label. I just know what I'm going to bring because my music good. And I know what I'm going to do to help that record label sales go up. So as long as them numbers right and it's a partnership, I still got my royalties and my masters. And I can do this shit kind of how I want to do it. And they just going to help me level up my fan base and my promotion and my and my fucking uh my material that I put out. I'm with that shit. That number got to be right, though. Got you, got you, got you. How would you describe your music? Shit, like I said, versatile. You can get, I got the whole package. I got club music. I got music you can just vibe to. 
I got freestyles. I got bars. I can make any type of music, bro. It just all depends on what you looking for when you go through my catalog that day. I don't got one set of description for my music because I'm too versatile to put my shit in one box of one category. Got you, got you. So what's next for Speedway? Any mixtapes, video shows coming up? I mean, it's a lot more videos. You know, shout out my little brother, Trey. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all tap in with FO Visuals, find this option. My little brother, Trey, we got videos coming. It's my other blood little brother on my daddy's side. So I got much more videos coming. Tap in with the videos I already got out now. I got at least about 10 videos out right now on YouTube. Get in tune to them videos I already got dropped. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I got much more videos coming. I always got music in the chamber. That's one thing about me. Even if I ain't dropping, I'm always in that booth sharpening my sword. So I got music for days. I just got to keep stay tapped in. But I definitely got more music dropping. And that's what was leading into my next question is, Yo, passion for music and, and the hunger that you have for wanting it. You got a catalog already from the past 10, 15 years that you could drop today that Thanks. could still go up. You've been in this for so long and knowing how to go in the studio, lay two songs within this amount of time at that skill set. Uh, can you give some, some tips to some dudes that's probably trying to they trying to reach that skill set, but they really don't know how to have that passion for the art, how you do. Shit, the best advice I got for you, first of all, this shit got to be in you. This shit got to be what you want to do. You got to be willing to give your all with this shit. You got to be willing to put in the grind and the hard work for that shit. You got to be consistent. Consistency is number one. Your music could be completely trash, nigga. But eventually, if you keep being consistent, it's going to be motherfuckers that's going to listen to that shit because you keep putting it in the motherfucker face to the point where motherfuckers going to grow a liking to you off of your grind. A nigga might be like, damn, this nigga ain't that good, but he putting out so much fucking music and it's in my face so much. I'm about to listen to this nigga. And eventually that shit going to grow on them. That's going to grow on a fan base. So don't never let a motherfucker tell you your shit trash. That shit ain't going to do nothing. Because just because that motherfucker ain't feeling your shit, the more and more you stay consistent with that shit, it could be a motherfucker in a whole nother state listening to your shit. For example, on my SoundCloud, I got 30,000 plays on my SoundCloud. Majority of the people in my comments, they from out of town. They from different states. So even though your own city might not even be fucking with you at that time, that's okay. Your city don't never be behind you in the beginning until they see what you're doing out of town anyway. Keep being consistent with your music. Keep putting your all into that shit and stay in their face. Eventually, that shit and your fan base is going to grow. That shit going to pay off. Just keep going with that shit. Just got to really want to do that shit. Got you, got you. No. So what's a Speedway's playlist? What's your playlist look like right now? What do you listen to? Say, man, I got two different type of playlists. I got an R&B playlist and I got a hip-hop playlist. I ain't going to lie, my R&B playlist, that's my favorite because R&B music, that's what keep a nigga cool. That's what keep a nigga poised on point, keep a nigga smooth when it comes to dealing with the women. So shit, every Sunday... I'm on that R&B playlist. I ain't gonna lie, there ain't no niggas who can fuck with my R&B playlist either. But like shit, my hip hop playlist, shit, it's a mixture, you know. Uh, I just listen to a lot of my favorite artists. I like listening to new, new up and coming artists. So like right now, my playlist right now, it consists of like a little, lot of little Tyler. Um, Cause that's my little nigga, I fuck with him. Got a lot of uh, Dolph on there, got a lot of Key Glock on there. Uh, got a lot of Baby Money on there, Peasy. Um, shit. I got a lot of different niggas on there. Of course, Meek. I even got old people, like older people on there. I got Wayne on there. Got Jewels on there. Jewels my all-time favorite rapper. Got Jewels on there. Got Fab on there. You know what I'm saying? I, it's just, you're going to get all different style, all different type of music on my playlist. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just, you never know. You just got to know real music. You know what I'm saying? Well, man, it's been a, a great interview. It's been one of my favorite, if not my favorite. It's a classic. You know, this is blood. You will definitely be back on here. Cause they gon' they gonna want you back on here. Where do they get up with you at? Where where can we find you at? Where can we download some of the music? Where can we see some of the videos? Shit, man. If you want to get in tune with me, you know, hit me up for features or anything or collab or anything like that. Hit me up on Instagram, Speedway underscore G F G S P D W A Y underscore G F G for God Family Grind Entertainment. That's my shit. So you can hit me up on there. You can hit me up on Facebook by my government name. I'm not about to tell y'all my government name. If you already know me, then you already know my government name. You know, you can get with me on TikTok, same shit, Speedway underscore GFG. Snapchat, Speedway GFG. 
you know, uh, YouTube on YouTube, same way, Speedway. Um, but if you want to hit my my YouTube channel, it's God Family Grind Entertainment on YouTube. You know, just get up with me. Or if you just see me out in the streets or you see me out in public, man, reach out to me. Approach me. You know, I'm cool. I might not look approachable because, you know, I just don't know what niggas be on. But come at me. Let me know, like, you on some positive shit. You trying to work or you just trying to get a good conversation from me, man. I love deep conversation, bro. My mind frame is 20 years from my uh, 20 years ahead of my age. I always been like that. So shit. You know, just get up with me, man. Holler at me when you see me, man. Just don't come at me crazy, you know? Can't let a nigga cross me. I ain't giving no pass. If we catch a nigga lacking, we gon' get on your ass. Like you was bad, we put a switch on your ass.